All right, so here we're gonna do the example on page two of your packet, example number 19. And so in this case, we are doing the superposition principle with electrostatic forces. Fancy word for saying let's sum up the forces and see what it equals to find the net force. So we're using the electrostatic force, which is Coulomb's constant K, times the absolute value of the two charges multiplied by one another divided by the distance center to center between the two charges squared. So this one sets up, it says we got a positive five nano coulomb. So we're remembering that nano is 10 to the negative ninth coulombs, whereas micro was the 10 to the negative sixth coulombs. And we see that we have the positive five nano coulombs here at x equals zero. It then tells us we have another known charge, Q2, located at x equals 0.04 meters, and it has a negative three nano coulomb charge. And wants to know what charge do I need to place at x equals 0.02 meters such that this one will have a net force on it of zero. Okay. So thinking back to when we started this equation, this equation tells us about the magnitudes of things, like the magnitude of the force or the magnitude of the charge. It doesn't tell me about the sign on the charge or the direction of the force. So that's the first thing we're gonna figure out here. So thinking about this positive charge and this negative charge. So they're opposites, so they attract, meaning the Q2 is pulling Q3 this way. So in order for the net force to be zero, that means that our unknown charge has to be pushing it in this direction. And if I have one force this way, one force this way, they can balance out. And so based on that information, if they are repelling one another, that automatically tells me that this has to be a positive charge. They have to have the same sign to repel. So that's how we figure out the sign from the direction of the force. Now to find the magnitude of that charge. So we set up our equation. So I have F2 in the positive direction plus a negative F1 equals zero. We're now going to make our substitution using our force equations here. So F2 is going to be K times the two charges involved. So I have Q3 and F2 is going to be Q2. Those are absolute value signs divided by the distance between them squared, which is 0.04 squared. Now, I am going to drop this absolute value sign as I go on here, um, knowing full well that when I get down to substituting in my numbers, I'm not going to include that negative sign. All right. And then we have minus F1, which again is going to be K, times the two charges involved in force 1. And so it's going to be Q3 times Q1. Those are the two charges divided by the difference in their positions, 0.02 squared equals 0. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve for Q1. That's my only unknown here. So what I can do is I can move all this stuff to the same side, other side and set them equal to one another. And then I get to cross some stuff out. So Coulomb's constant, gone. The Q3 is on both sides, so that is also gone. And so the last step I need to do is just solve for Q1. And so I end up with Q1 is equal to 0.02 squared divided by 0.04 squared times Q2. Q2 was three nanocoulombs. And 0.02 divided by 0.04 turns out to be essentially a half and then we square it, we get a fourth. And so we get three divided by four. So we get three fourths of a nanocoulomb. If you typed it in your calculator, you would get something like 0.75 times 10 to the negative ninth or 7.5 times 10 to the negative tenth. So this is the magnitude. And so I need to put these two parts together, the magnitude and the sign, to find out that Q1 is going to be a positive 0.75 nanocoulombs. So there's that example. Try some on your own from the homework.